Do the New Orleans Saints have the best running back room in the NFL? Let's talk about that right here on the Straight Up Saints podcast. You're listening to the Straight Up Saints podcast. What is up, Houdat Nation? Welcome back inside another edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast. And this podcast is brought to you by Scott Fickner, Injury Lawyers. Have you been injured in a car accident, truck, 18-wheeler, or hurt offshore? Scott Fickner handles it all. You can give him a call at 504-500-1111 for a free consultation. Yes, that's right. A free consultation. They'll always fight for the win. So like I said in the beginning, do the Saints have the best running back room in the NFL. I don't think it is as clear to say yes because these boys still got to play 17 game football season. However, on paper, on paper, the New Orleans Saints have one of the best running back rooms in the NFL. I would say minimum top 5, maybe even top 3, who knows? Maybe even the best. We got to see if it ends up playing up to their potential. But let's talk about why we love and by we, I mean me and hopefully you. Love the New Orleans Saints backfield. Let's start off with the stats from last year. Let's go into that because I think it's always important to look at what you had last year. What did you add this year? And if we talk about what they had last year, we're talking about a rushing attack that was 19th in the NFL in yards. Not exactly what you want. And 22nd in rushing yards per attempt. Also not what you want. You're in the bottom half of the league in two very important statistics. Now, how does that magically go into a top five running back room I think there's a lot to take into consideration. Let's start with the first thing. Alvin Kamara was not Alvin Kamara of old last season. I think there was a lot of wear and tear on him. A lot was asked for him. And I always kind of think of Alvin Kamara like the Charmin's commercial for toilet paper. Less is more with him. And I know you guys are going to be like, there goes Chris again, being a cornball, using a reference. I mean it, though. Less is more with Alvin Kamara. When Alvin's got 15 to 18 good usage touches, I would say. You put him in great situations for him to make plays. That's when you get the best out of him. When you turn him into a bell cow and run the ball with him 25 times, I've never thought that's the best version of Alvin Kamara. Never thought it once, never will think of it. I just don't think that's who he is. So that's for starters. I didn't love the usage of him, and it wasn't their fault. They kind of had to. Why'd they have to use him that much? The running back room was not deep at all. No disrespect to Mark Ingram, leading rusher in Saints history, one of the probably best vocal leaders they've had over the last decade. I love Mark Ingram. I have no issue with Mark Ingram. But Mark Ingram is no longer a serviceable running back, too. It's unfortunate, but time has passed him. He's had a hell of a career. I salute him for that. But he was running back, too, when he really shouldn't have been. And just to put into perspective how this season went for him, no knock on Mark. What is the one thing you remember from Mark Ingram this season? Because I could speak for a lot of people. It's that Tampa Bay game where I know he was hurt, but he stepped out of bounds before the first down. And then Tampa Bay makes that crazy comeback. I'm not saying he lost in the game. I'm saying that's the, the, the easiest memory I have of him. What do I pull out from 2022? That was it for him. So running back two wasn't there. Running back three, non-existent. No matter how hard the Saints tried to get things going, it wasn't working. They had a moment with Latavius Murray in London, and we all thought, man, he looked great. And then he got picked up by the Broncos because he was technically on the Saints practice squad. So nothing ever materialized in that RB3 spot. Nothing. And I know the Saints picked up, you know, Benjamin late in the year. Didn't really get to show anything, though, because it was so late in the season. So you had no help from RB2, no help from RB3. And as a result, RB1 pretty much got, I would say, overworked at that position. So I think Alvin won't have to do as much, which means I think he can produce way better than he did last year. Last year, 897 rushing yards, and that is considering three awful games, statistically speaking. 26 yards against the Steelers, 13 against the 49ers, 30 against the Ravens. I couldn't believe it when I went and looked back. I was like, how did? How were the three games where he had 30 rushing yards or less? But you look in those games, like the 49ers one, seven carries, that's it. Nothing was working offensively. Baltimore game, they were down early, abandoned the run. That makes sense. Pittsburgh game, utter disaster for everyone. So hard to pin it on one person. But those are three games where if I take those out, right? Because I believe if my math serves me correctly, those are, oddly enough, 69 rushing yards we're taking out. Nice number. You take that out of the 897 rushing yards, he pretty much had 800 plus yards in just 12 games with five more to go in terms of averaging it out. That would still be a really good season for Alvin. But those three games added with the fact that he just didn't have a lot of help, 
really affected him. So I think he's going to have more help. Why is that the case? Well, the Saints prioritized running back in free agency, and they did it in the draft. So let's talk about the running back they got in free agency. Jamal Williams. Talk about yards, where you're ranking. 11th in rushing yards, over 1,000 yards for him. Led the league in rushing touchdowns. I don't think that's the type of statistic that you carry over to New Orleans and go, that's going to change everything. I think he's great in goal line situations. He's great in the short yard. But touchdowns don't always carry over from year to year. We know that with Alvin, you'd have 18 one season and then wouldn't have 18 the next. It's just hard to replicate. But I love that he was 11th in rushing yards. I think that's great for New Orleans. Six in rushing attempts for first downs. That is something that matters. Because you put him in those short yard situations, you trust him. And that's what it's all about with him. So I love that aspect for Jamal Williams. And how about going to the draft and getting Kendra Miller from TCU, who had the most rushing yards in a season for any TCU back since the great Ladanian Tomlinson with 1,399 rushing yards. So literally 1,400 rushing yards for the, for the year uh, at TCU, which ranked 15th in the country, 6.2 yards per carry. That's fantastic. He was eighth in rushing touchdowns. Again, don't love the touchdown thing because you never know, but the fact that he had 6.2 yards per carry, pretty much 1,400 rushing yards, dominant all year long, it's not to love about the kid. So I add Jamal Williams into the fold. I add Kendra Miller into the fold. You have Eno Benjamin, who can maybe, maybe develop into something in New Orleans. Finally have depth at the position. And that depth at the position is why we sit here today and we have this conversation as to do they have the best running back room in the NFL. And I can't say for certain right now as of May 8th or whatever day it is that I am recording that the Saints have the best running back room because I got to see it play out. But I'm going to list running back rooms that I like and I think the Saints have more depth and, and weapons than those teams. I love the duo of A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones in Green Bay. But Alvin, Jamal Williams, and Kendra Miller, I would rather have the three. I think I like that room better. The Eagles, DeAndre Swift, Kenneth Gainwell, Rashad Penny, Boston Scott. Those are all serviceable options. All of them. I kind of like what New Orleans has. I think Alvin is way better than DeAndre Swift. I think that Rashad Penny, really good back, but he's always hurt. So I would take Jamal Williams. Gainwell, he's proven. But Kendrick Miller's got that untapped potential, and you want to trust him. So, again, that's another room. San Francisco, I think CMC and Elijah Mitchell, that's what you want in a duo. They balance each other out well. But after that, it's Jordan Mason who's had moments. But again, there's some uncertainty there. So the Saints fall in that mix. And I'll name one more team that I think is well deserving of this conversation. It's actually Atlanta with B. John Robinson, Tyler Algier, and Cordaro Patterson. But even then, the Saints have enough firepower to match up there. I'm not saying theirs is better. I'm saying they have enough firepower. So I think if we're going to be objective and we're going to say, let's put out a number going into the season, I think the Saints, at minimum, have a top five running back room in the NFL. I actually think it's top three in the NFL because I like them over Green Bay. I like them over Seattle because even though Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, that sounds ec you know ecstatic, at the end of the day, you still got DJ Dallas there. So if Charbonnet and Kendra Miller cross each other out, Jamal Williams is way better than DJ Dallas. And Alvin Kamara had a down year. I still think Alvin and Kenneth, you're having a conversation. Obviously, you're GM of a team. You want the younger back. But... Alvin is still a damn good player. I think people think he's washed. I do not think that's the case at all. So I, I think it's a top three room. And that's where I'm going to settle it at for now. I think on paper, this is a top three room, but the talent is there. And I'll go one step further. If this running back room does what we think they can, what they have the potential to be, that is the difference between being a winning team and a losing team next season. Because I think there's going to be moments where the Saints are going to have those crunch drives, crunch time situation drives, and... With a coach like Dennis Allen, where you are defense heavy, I don't know if there's a perfect play call coming from Pete Carmichael on offense that's just going to free a guy open, Derek Carr's going to hit him, game's over, you iced it. But if you can run the football well, and they have three backs to do it, plus Eno Benjamin if he works out, and Taysom Hill on top of it, the Saints can really impose their will on teams if they have an offensive line that is healthy and pushing people in the run game. So I look at games like Seattle, I look at games like the, the game against the Raiders. A lot of those games where the Saints finally look like a good team, they ran the ball really well. It's no secret. And if they're going to have success and they're going to be a team that wins more than they lose next year, which is all we're asking for right now, they got to run the football and they got to get good usage out of that running back room. But I flipped the question over to you guys. Do the Saints have 
the best running back room in the NFL? If your answer is no, where do you list it on paper? Top five, top three, top 10? Is it out of the top 10, which would be kind of a shock to me, but who knows? It's your opinion, and I want to hear it down in the comment section below. And as always, guys, make sure to subscribe to Boot Crew Media's YouTube page to get more content like this. You can hit the notification bell, and you'll get alerted when new videos like this one drop, so make sure to do that as well. Uh, and as always, stay tuned for more content here from the Straight Up Saints podcast, the destination for the Houdat Nation.